I am the professor. I am the professor who goes by the name of Julius Sumner Miller. And our business is physics. But I'm reminded, do you know what the name Julius means? Huh. It means curly-haired. And there you have it, curly-haired. We are talking last time about inertia. Things at rest wish to remain at rest. Later on, we'll expand that, as did Newton. Things in uniform motion in a straight line want to continue to do that. So, coming to this inertia further, you will imagine with me the following. Remember, I have pointed up the extraordinary need to have imagination to live and work with me. You are to imagine as follows. You are walking along the street, the walk on April Fool's Day, and you come upon two packages which are nicely and neatly tied, and they look exactly alike. And you are led irresistibly, irresistibly to kick one. And it goes so. And then you are led irresistibly to kick the other. Ho, ho, and it does not go so. And if indeed you have shoes with no toes, as has been the custom in some cultures in recent history, you will forever remember Isaac Newton. Indeed, would you believe it once I had a girl student mount at the lecture table and that uh, she had on her feet shoes without toes? Mark you, what infamy this is for my heart. The principal purpose of a shoe is to protect the foot. So she has no toes in the shoes. She kicked this one, and it went so. She kicked that one and broke a toe. She kicked that one, and it went so. She kicked this one and broke a toe. I'm a poet and don't know it. Inertia. Incredible. Now, let us come. Oh, I'm going to show you a demonstration in due course on the weight of the air. And you will see how enormous this principle of inertia. This is an inclined plane down to my right. Here is a uniform, homogeneous, isotropic wooden cylinder. Solid. It's center of gravity is in its geometrical center along the geometric axis. Now, when I put it in this position, its center of gravity is so high above the plane of the table, which we call the zero potential plane. And when I let it go, it goes downhill. Answer in terms of physics. The energy of a system tends toward less. The energy of a... See, I have less energy now than two hours ago. Two hours ago, I stored my engine with food, which I metabolized by some chemical mechanism. But I have less energy now than before. I'm spending a great deal of it talking to you. The energy is emerging here at a frightful rate. So the energy of a system tends toward less, and that's why this went down. For example, you park your car on a hillside and the brakes break loose. Which way is the car most likely to go? Answer, down. Now I put this at the top of the hill. Ho oh, ho, and it stays put and slops itself away quietly. Where is its center of gravity? Its center of gravity is in the geometrical center of the double base of the two cones and along that principal long axis. So when in this position its center of gravity is so high, above that zero potential plane. Here, ho ho, here the center of gravity is higher. So, oh, and now somebody says, I am glad it did not roll because the professor is troubled. No, I am not troubled. There is abundant friction there. And so I will just turn it a little bit. And now it appears to roll uphill, which is a violation of nature. It has indeed rolled downhill, and that's wonderful to think about. And we shall talk more about inertia another time. I thank you for watching.